Hi, I'm Blaine with Devil's Lake Service. Kevin with uh, Devil's Lake AMS crew. Uh, today we're going to take a little look at the 700 series combine to get you guys ramped up for this harvest season. We're going to start with walking around on the ground everything that we would see outside of this combine. Then we're going to hop up in the hopper and see if there's anything there that we need to take a look at before we're getting going. And then I'm going to also jump inside the cab to help us look at what we would see inside that display to get us ready for this year. Let's walk over here and take a look at the side of the combine. As you guys are fueling up in the morning, just come over and take a look at all your belts. Uh, make sure we don't have a bunch of chaff building up on the side of the combine. Usually when we have a bunch of chaff building up, usually indicates we got a problem. You know, either something with the uh, rotor hood, or rotor covers that didn't get installed right, or something like that. But we don't want a lot of build up on the side. It'll start sucking into the fan, and we start having issues with fan blades and stuff like that. So just make sure we don't have a bunch of build up on the sides. Now as we take a look at a little bit of the technology here, um, on this 700 series combine, we do have cameras in the clean grain elevator and the tellings. Every now and then, if you guys are down here walking around, we can pop these cameras open and then make sure that these lenses are clean so that we can get the correct readings in the screen for our automation process for this combine. After we're done with that, we'll walk over here around the front and take a look at the feeder house. Another thing I want you guys to be looking at is our chains. Always take a look at our chains uh, as far as our feeder house goes. Our feeder house conveyance chain, we want to make sure that that's tight. Um, if guys, if you get a new one put in, make sure you check it about every 25 hours for the first 100 hours as it's going to stretch out quite a bit. Same with your drive chain. Just take a look at it, make sure we're not rubbing too hard anywhere. Um, it takes a lot of life out of everything here. Another thing to look at, just make sure we don't have a bunch of dents or anything on the drum. And just take a look at your floor, make sure we don't have anything that's starting to lift. Um, that takes a lot out of them as far as feeding. You'll start having a lot of issues that way. Another thing to look at, just take a look at our single point here. Make sure we don't have any of these rings that are pushed in, our seals that are pushing out, then we'll, that'll cause a lot of leakage. Um, when you guys are going to hook up, just make sure you're cleaning this out. Use some electrical cleaner. That way we're not pushing pins out and we have electrical issues that way. Just take a look around, make sure we don't have a bunch of buildup around the, the belts or the reverser. You start getting a bunch of stuff built up on the reverser, you're going to get a lot more heat than we'd like, and uh, that'll take a lot of life out of your reverser. Yeah, on this side of the combine, one thing uh, we've been finding out is every once in a while, just take this top shield off. What happens is you'll get a bunch of chaff buildup in this arm, and it causes the, the chaffer to start to twist. And that's where we're starting to see a lot of problems with breaking arms, breaking chaffer frames, and stuff of that nature. Um, so, I mean, a little goes a long way here. Just pop this thing off maybe once a week and make sure we're not getting a bunch of buildup under here because it'll save you guys a lot of money and a lot of downtime. The only other thing on this side, guys with DEF, make sure you're checking that filter periodically. That way we're not uh, getting it plugged up and we don't have, start having issues with uh, the DPF. And just take a look at the chain, make sure the tightener isn't getting bent or anything weird like that. Um, and we should be good to go. Kevin, if you want to take us up into the cab. All right, now that we're up inside the cab, I'm gonna show you a few things to look at inside this display. Like where do we go to find the calibrations? How do we do some adjustments when it comes to our yield and moisture? And then also for our header, how we can adjust that record stop height if we need to raise or lower depending on the crop size. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do in here is we're gonna go into the menu button. Once in here, under machine settings, you'll see calibrations and procedures. In here is where we can see all the calibrations available for this machine as far as the mass flow or the moisture. And there's the active yield that we'll talk about once we hop up inside the hopper there. 
If you scroll down, you can see there's a yield calibration as well. Um, not only do we have the automation part for the active yield, but you can do a manual one as well here. Um, you can also go into the header calibration. And this is where we would calibrate for our feeder house uh, uh, for and aft range, and then our speed for that. We're gonna exit out of this real quick. And then uh, what I wanna show you now is inside the header. In here, right now we do not have a header hooked up, but if you wanted to uh, adjust, let's say your track spacing, we would just simply click on this header. And here's where can we can adjust the width. And then here's where we set our height for this. So this is where you would raise or lower manually and then you would just set that record uh, stop height to where it would activate for your recording. We'll hop back into that calibrations real quick. And then inside the active yield, this combine is equipped with the scales inside the hopper. If we go inside there, there's a toggle for it on and off. After it does a few loads, um, it'll start calculating on its own. If there is for any reason we need to make an adjustment, at the top here there's an arrow with a dot. Here we can do a uh, correction if we're for some reason we want to uh, make that adjustment or we can reset that way we can start a whole new calibration procedure. The last thing I want to talk about here is I get uh, a few calls about you guys having some trouble codes that may not necessarily be a present issue. Um, I'm gonna walk you through on how to clear those because if we do not have those cleared, up in the corner post we get that little yellow explanation that's always blinking and so if we have a, an issue that's serious, we don't know if it's actually happening or not because it's already showing for something else. What we wanna do after we get into the menu here on this display, we'll go to systems. There's this diagnostic center. After we're in here, you'll see the trouble codes on the left-hand side. Once in here, you'll get a list of all of them. And at the bottom here, we have the option to clear codes. And then it'll ask you uh, if you're sure you wanna clear it, you'll just hit okay. And then that's how we get going again to where we can make sure there isn't no any current real issues going on. Um, and then we can get back to the field and uh, get what we need done. Now we're gonna step outside of the cab and uh, walk our way around the back and get up in the hopper and show you guys a few things there. All right, up in your hopper, just take a look at your auger. Make sure it's not getting thin, bent over, anything like that. We want to get the grain away as fast as we can. The only other thing to look at is pop your auger down every once in a while. Take a look at your mass flow sensor. Make sure it's not getting rippled or ripped. And just take a look at your upper clean grain uh, sprocket. Make sure it's not getting sharp. And that's about it up here. So as I talked about in the cab, uh, we've seen the active yield where to go to calibrate those and make those uh, settings and turn that uh, feature on. Here in the, the hopper itself, there's three scales that are here across. Um, once those are installed, it'll start reading once that feature is turned on. Uh, keep in mind, um, back till model year 12, this is a feature that can be retrofitted on uh, after the fact, field installed. Um, these can be ordered from the factory as well. Uh, this is some of the features that are here up in the hopper. Uh, hope you guys liked the video. If there's anything else that you guys want or need, be sure to let us know. We thank you for your business and hope you have a good harvest season.